Hey, it's Greg here with MaritimeGardening.com and I thought I'd do another one of those cooking videos. People have asked me how I uh, cook my kale and I cook it lots of different ways, but I thought I'd show you the most uh, basic way uh, that I do it. Um, so uh, let's, uh, let's get started. So uh, step one is to clean the kale. Basically you, you take the, uh, you know, the kale and you, you shuck it. You sort of grab a stem and you know, you'd have it over a bowl like this. So it goes very quickly. You just take a kale and shuck it. Stick it in the bowl. Right. The stems, you cut the very bottom part off, right, put that in the compost, and then you cut those up. That's what I'm going to do right now. The, the first thing you want to do, I'm going to turn the pan on. I'm using, I'm using a wok here, putting the wok on high. Um, you cut up your stems and you cut up your garlic. It's basically garlic and kale and some things that flavor a little bit. Um, so the stems take longer to cook. These only, the, the leaves only took, take like, like a minute to cook, right? So you want the stems and the garlic in first. So I got my stems here. I'm just going to cut them up really fine. Take the smaller you cut them, the faster they cook. I'm going to put them in this container. And now, I'm going to do this in real time so you can see how quickly this goes together. Now normally I'd use garlic cloves, uh, but since uh, my garlic uh, escapes are coming in, this, this is a garlic scape. It's basically the, the garlic's attempt to make a flower, even though it really doesn't make a flower. It makes a, a bulbul, I guess, but anyway. Uh, you get these things, once they've made a turn like this, that's when they're ready to snap off. And if you take these off your garlic, you get bigger garlic, just according to research. So uh, they're kind of a, a pain to cut up fine, just because of the way you can't really line them all up in a straight row so you're going to really watch your fingers and be extra extra careful when you're chopping these up actually just about a week ago i took took the end off one of my fingers um, like not the sort of thing where you can still <laughs> making it sound worse than it was but anyway i took the tip off of my fingers doing something like this because mainly because i was using the wrong knife i was using a basically not a chef's knife this, this is a chef's knife it's a much safer knife to use for cutting things up. Uh, we'll go a little bit more. Just throw a little bit more in there. I like it really garlicky. Like that maybe. By the time I'm done cutting this, the pan should be ready. Take you over to the pan. The pan is hot. And it's actually starting to smoke a bit, so let's get some oil in there. I'm just going to need a little bit of olive oil, maybe about a tablespoon. And I'll throw this in. Move this around a little bit. Now I can turn it back up a bit. I'm going to put a pinch of uh, like the crushed chilies. I like a little bit of heat. This might be uh, half a teaspoon maybe. And uh, just put a lid on this for a moment. All right, while that's going on, let's get back to the kale. Okay, I've set my timer for, uh, for two minutes while those uh, stems cook. And in that time, I'll process these, uh, these leaves here up here. The stemless leaves. Nothing too fancy. Everything's nice and clean here, right? Nothing too fancy about this process. Don't grab too much or you cut the end off your finger. <laughs> That's exactly how I did it. I was just holding too much kale and using the wrong kind of knife. I'm not using proper form. I got a viewer who was a former uh, chef or cook or something and he's always Commenting, comment, commenting on technique and such, so I hope I'm not letting them down here. Basically, you, you, you tilt your knife a little bit so it basically slides off your finger. If it's tilted in or straight, you might cut your finger, but if it's sideways a little bit, then you, you can't cut your hand. I'm sure there's, you know, some good videos online about proper technique. 
Just turn the burner down to six there. Just by the sound of it, I could tell it was getting a bit hot. You don't want to, you don't want to burn oil, right? You're using oil on a pan. Uh, whatever about the oil is good for you becomes the not good for you when you start burning it. <laughs> Starts becoming uh, the opposite. So you don't want that. This is the sort of thing I would throw together any weekday evening as a, a side dish. I mean, I'm, I'm basically by myself today, so this. This and a little bit of pasta basically is, is, is supper for me. Um, some pasta with uh, pesto. I got a pesto video. I either released it before this video or will release it after this video. And uh, the pasta I made was made with that uh, pesto. All right, we're done cutting this up. Let's go back to the uh, to the wok. All right, the timer is saying that it is time to uh, add some things to this mix here. The pan is hot. I'm going to throw this kale in. Looks like a lot, but it's really not. Basically cover a plate nicely. Now I'm going to add base, uh, three ingredients to this. Things that I like. Um, I'm going to add some sesame seed oil. I'm going to add uh, some uh, soy sauce. I don't know, maybe. I, I just make a circle, like one, two, three. And then, this I do measure because if you have too much, it's not, uh, it's the right amount. This is like uh, fish sauce. I don't know how they make it. Oh, smells uh, kind of like rotten fish, but it tastes really good. <laughs> this is, so this is like almost a vegetarian dish, except that uh, this uh, fish sauce was squeezed out of a fish in some fashion, after some fashion. Um, anyway, if you're trying to reduce your, your uh, meat consumption, uh, fish sauce really gives uh, things a, a nice tastiness that uh, you, you miss if you're uh, you know, used to eating ridiculous amounts of meat. It's sort of a good, good way to wean yourself off. And often when I make this dish, uh, I, I, I add maybe one third uh, Swiss chard because the uh, the kale really uh, flattens or Swiss chard really flattens out when you cook it, but the kale sort of holds its shape. So uh, by virtue of uh, of cooking the Swiss chard with the kale, you get that you know the, it doesn't shrink down to nothing. Also, they just seem to go really well together, kale and Swiss chard. I'm not doing that here, but they do tend to go well together. So I was going to put that on for a minute, and then we'll be done. All right, so while we're waiting for that to cook, I thought I'd just show you the, uh, the pasta I made. So this is just you know spaghetti noodles with some uh, pesto sort of tossed into it. It's not much, but basically if you... It's nothing fancy, but basically if you want some pasta and you want to give it a little bit of pizzazz, for this amount of noodles, this might be uh, three cups uh, cooked. I would have added... Uh, two good tablespoons of the pesto uh, right after the uh, pasta was cooked. It's fresh pesto and uh, that'll give it a nice, uh, and just let it, let it sit like that. Okay, our kale's done. Just gonna clean up a little bit here. Get rid of this. If you like it more cooked, you can cook it more. It's really up to you, right? The more you cook it, the, the more you, uh, you know, lose in terms of what's, uh, what's good about it, what it's good for sort of thing. And there's many debates that rage about, or the debate rages on about whether you should cook it or eat it raw. And, uh, I know I eat a lot more of it when I cook it, so I think I'm going to err on the side of that. But. I'm not a health expert and I'm not a health guru. Um, what I do know is I probably eat more kale than most people. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't really worry too much about it. Anyway. There we go. Nice mess of kale.
going to be great. It's going to have the, that with some pasta. Going to have a great supper. So uh, that's all I do. You know, I mean, there's lots of different. You don't have to do it the way I do it. Certainly, when I was trying to um, uh, train my kids on to kale and get my kids to like this sort of thing, uh, when I was cooking the garlic and the stems, I would uh, dice up a piece of bacon, uh, just one slice, but throw that in with it, and it, it would give it that sort of um, bacon bit flavor. And because the kids liked bacon. And that would get them over. Now they did. They, I, I basically cook it like this. I don't add bacon to it anymore, and they're fine with it. So, uh, hope that uh, was useful for those people asking me how I cook kale and that sort of thing. Oh, I, I can't get it to taste good. That's all I do. You know, one, two, three sesame seed oil, one, two, three soy sauce, teaspoon of fish oil, um, or fish uh, fish sauce. And of course, you can you can. You know, you don't have to do it the way I'm doing it, right? Now, garlic's important. Uh, I find it, it adds to the flavor. Um, but I'm sure there's a, a, a thousand different ways you can dress this up. But this is the basic way I do it most of the time. And you can have more salt, less salt, however you like. I hope you found that interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. Check out my podcast, MaritimeGardening.com. And until next time, get out there, get at it, and have fun in your kitchen. Thanks for watching. <laughs>